What's up, everybody? It's Friday. That means it's time for another Full Draw Friday. This one's going to be episode number 13. We're going to talk about some early food plot prep on this one. And then at the end of it, we'll talk about our new partner here on the Ridge Hunter Outdoors podcast. It's actually our first partner for the Full Draw Friday, so we're excited about that. But as far as the food plot prep, this is just going to be stuff that can get you ahead of the curve for the upcoming spring planting season or even the fall season if uh, you're doing fall food plots and help you bank some decisions on that stuff as well. So, Full Draw Friday number 13. Mm. We are in off-season mode here on Full Draw Friday. So that means we're in food plot mode also. If for you guys that own ground and do food plots, hopefully a lot of this stuff's going to be helpful to you over the next several months as we talk about stuff that you can do as far as planting, how to plant, what to plant, and all that. But before we can get into that, we got to talk about how to prepare for that. And there is stuff you can do right now. I know it seems like planting season is still probably a couple months away, but it'll be here before you know it especially if you don't really think about it. Next thing you know, it'll be here and you'll be behind the eight ball already. So I'm going to talk about some really early stuff that you can do to prepare. The first thing is something that I've mentioned on the last couple of episodes, at least the last one when I talked about winter scouting. That's going to be evaluating the usage of your food plot that you put last year. So what I mean by that is, especially right now, you're going to be able to tell just how much those deer have been in your food plot especially if you had, if you know you had a good crop out there this year and it's just been decimated, obviously that's a good sign that they've been using it frequently. Other things, you know, if you had a good crop and it still looks like it did back in October, obviously they haven't used it much. Now that still could change over the next month, month and a half, but right now you're going to have a pretty good idea of if they used it during the season or not, which is really when you want them using it. Obviously we do plant some stuff that they'll benefit from, you know, January through March as well, when everything's still not green, just for overall herd health. But ideally, you can plant something that they'll be using during the season as well, or at least a combination of the things where you're not wasting space uh, on your food plots. So you can kind of tell, again, what, what they liked or what they didn't like. And some of that might just be, if it's your first year planting something new, maybe they ate on it a little bit, and you want to go back to it another for next year and see then and if it doesn't work next year then maybe you change it up so maybe you don't give up on it right away or it could be location that could be an issue as well we talked about or I talk about a lot as far as food plot location it's hard to pull deer a really long distance away from where they want to be anyway so if you're trying to do that maybe that's part of your issue but those are going to be things to look at as far as usage goes and then also if if your food plot is just absolutely ate down to dirt that's something where you're going to want to think about maybe making it bigger for next year and giving them a little bit more food. That way they can eat on it for a longer period of time and they don't have to move on to something else. Uh, and it, it's going to be provide some nutrition for them for a longer period of time. And who knows, maybe they maybe they ate it down in November or even December and you just hadn't been back to it. Uh, if you got cameras, that can really help. Or maybe you noticed that back in November, December. Then you're really going to want to probably expand that food plot to an extent. There are other things you can do to combat that. If you're already up to like an acre food plot or, you know, bigger, I would take a look at what's around you first. Go into your woods and look and see if there is any woods around or whatever's around you and see what kind of natural browse they have available, especially, you know, throughout the fall and then this time of year. Because if they have zero natural browse, then they're just going to hammer your food plot and then move on to something else as soon as it's ate down. So if you have a half half acre food plot and no natural browse, that's not going to be enough tonnage to support that deer herd. They're going to eat it down to nothing and then they move on. So that's something you can do, especially if you're in a case where you can't expand those food plots. If you can only put a half acre or a quarter acre and you don't want the deer to completely decimate it before you can even hunt it or before you get to the good part of the season or before they can really benefit from it when everything else is dead, you got to take a look at what else you have around and some things you can do to improve that. And that comes with timber stand improvement, things of that nature. And we'll talk a little bit about that on some future episodes as well. But this one, we're focusing on the food plot. So that's just another thing to think about whether you need to expand it or not. 
make it bigger um, if that's the reason that, that there was nothing left. So those are some things you can look at as far as usage goes. The next thing you're going to look at once you've kind of decided on, you know, and that's going to play into a little bit something I'm going to talk about here in a minute. But the next thing I would do is take some soil tests. Go out there with a soil test kit. I know Whitetail Institute makes one. You can do one through your local uh, ag supplier. They're going to have kits that you can use. You can find them about anywhere. And I'm not just talking about a pH test, which is important also, so you can figure out where you're at on that and if you need lime and all that. But a full soil test kit that's going to tell you how much of everything you need it's going to give you all your different levels. That way you know what kind of fertilizer you're going to you're going to want to use because if you're putting seed into poor soil, you're really kind of wasting your money. You're going to have a lot of seed that doesn't germinate well. Even the seed that does germinate, it's not going to grow up to its full potential. So that's a big one that I think gets missed a lot is doing your soil test kits and maintaining that. Even on plots that are perennial, like clover plots and stuff, if you've had them for several years, that stuff you got to keep up. Not only just to reach the full potential of that plot, but to keep that plot going. At some point, that stuff's going to take all the nutrients out of the soil, and it's just not going to grow anymore, and then you're going to have to start from scratch. So if you already have an established plot, and you want to keep it going, do your soil test kits, put down what's recommended for whatever you're planting, and then you're going to have a lot better plot in the end. And that's that's part of the work that has to go into it. If you want one of those good, nice, green food plots, you're going to take a look at the soil first. So make sure you're doing that. Another thing is uh, you can look at also would be like the sunlight. So from year to year, especially if you have a plot in the woods, if your canopy changes, if you're in a maturing timber and it's starting to close up, maybe you got to look at trimming some trees or taking some trees out to get more sunlight to the ground. So that's going to be a factor as well as even if you have good soil, if you don't have the sunlight, uh, your food plot's not going to grow well, well either. So take a look at that as well with your with your soil test kit. And go from there. Now, based on those two things, evaluating the usage and your soil test, then you can kind of decide what you want to plant this upcoming season, whether that be something in the spring, whether it be grains, whether it be wheat, rye, oats, that kind of stuff, brassicas, clover and chicory, some kind of blend of that. Whatever you want, you know, whatever you're thinking, you can make a decision based on those two things, based on what they used last year or what they didn't use last year how much actual tonnage you need, and then what your soil test shows you. There are certain blends of seed that will work better in different soil conditions. So if you don't have the ability to get your soil right for, let's just use clover and brassicas as an example. If you're wanting to plant clover, but your soil is already closer to where it needs to be for brassicas, and you don't have the ability to put all the fertilizer down to get it where it needs to be for clover then probably want to go ahead and plant those brassicas as long as they're using them. Now, if you planted them last year and the year before and the deer didn't use them and didn't seem like it was really working for you, um, you might check what kind of seed you're using, first of all, and see what kind of brassicas you're actually getting planted out there. But number two, maybe if you want to go to clover, then you're going to have to do the work. Uh, Clover generally requires a different pH than a lot of brassicas do. So that's going to be the biggest thing. Uh, Oftentimes, lime is the biggest factor. Uh, if your pH isn't right, you're not going to grow anything anyway, so you got to get it right first, and then you can go from there. But if they're not using what you had in the past and you need to get it right, you need, then you need to get the soil right for what you want to plant. But again, you might not be able to do that, so you can kind of make your decision based on those soil test kits um, as well as the usage. There might be a blend that's better for your soil, and soil type goes into that as well. There's also different blends that are better for different soil types. Some stuff is just not going to grow in, say, a sandy loam where other stuff might flourish in it. So that's something you want to keep in mind as well. And like I said, now is going to be the time to start thinking about making those decisions and then ordering your seed. It's been crazy like the last three years, two years, ordering anything and getting it in. Supply and demand has been crazy. So... You want to make sure you can get what you want. So you might go ahead and order that stuff now, order it early. And then you'll have it when it comes time to plant. And that gives you some time as well. If you wait till last minute and something gets held up or it's on back order, then it may not even get here until after you needed to plant it, after a good planting season is over, 
or you might have had to just settle for something else that you didn't want in the first place or a lesser seed or had to go buy something off the Walmart shelf that wasn't quite as good as the stuff you ordered. So go ahead and get that stuff done early. And you can make those decisions now based on the first two things I talked about. So that's uh, that's another thing I'm going to say is a big one as far as early food plot prep is making those decisions, getting that stuff ordered. Another one, if you have established clover plots and that's what you're sticking with and that's what you want to go with, uh, like we have a few, we've got some clients with some, here over the next month, two months, is going to be prime time for frost seeding that clover, depending on where you're at in the country. But here in the Midwest, especially February, March time frame, get out there, do that frost seeding, and all that is is broadcasting clover seed into your existing plots. That way, the freezing and the thawing of the soil will work that seed down in. You know, clover doesn't have to have a quarter inch of depth. The worst thing guys do when they're planting clover, especially in new plots, is getting that stuff too deep and it never comes up. It doesn't have enough energy. Once it germinates to break through the soil, and then it dies. So you can just broadcast it over the top. Like I said, the freezing and thawing of the soil will work that seed in deep enough where it can germinate and come up here in the springtime when it gets warm enough, when the soil temperature gets right. That stuff's going to come up. It's a great way to fill in holes from your plot from last year, stuff that maybe didn't come up, especially if you had a new plot, or stuff that just didn't, where the soil maybe got worse, so you went in and done that fertilizing, and then you can go in and do that frosting as well, so you can fill in some patches that way. If you had some weed issues last year, you can get them killed out, put that clover out in those spots. Uh, it's a really good way to maintain, and it's an important thing when it comes to maintaining your clover plot, because some of that stuff is going to die this year as well, so you can go over and frost seed that clover and chicory, uh, whatever your perennial plot is, and get it get it maintained in that aspect as well before you even ever have to think about spraying or mowing or anything like that. That's going to be a big one over the next month to two months. The last one I've got down is it's a good time of year to mark for your improvements, like where you want physically go out there and take some tape or take some like utility flags. You've got them at your local department store, I'm sure. Uh, Go out there, mark what you want to do for this coming planting season. Whether that be expanding your plot, like I talked about earlier, you can go out and mark what trees you need to cut down, what brush you need to move. Uh, you can mark the borders of where you want the plot to go to. That way you don't forget. Um, it's going to be an easy visual for when you're on a piece of equipment or you're doing anything really using a chainsaw. Uh, that way you can mark that and see. It's one thing to have it marked on a map. It's another thing to actually have it physically marked. So you can start with marking it on a map if you want, but I would seriously recommend going and getting some tape or, like I said, some flags and go out there and mark what you want to do. Again, that could be expanding your food plot. It could be shrinking your food plot. You might mark off something that you don't want to plant again next year. That way you don't waste that seed. Uh, it wasn't beneficial for you well, for whatever reason. You might want to reduce the food plot as well. That's another thing that you can mark off. You might want to mark where you're going to plant different seeds for this year. Maybe you're going to break that acre up into a half acre of something, a half acre of something else. So you can break that up however you want to do it. Uh, you can mark for screening if you want to split the plot in half, if you want to screen the outsides, if you want to screen where you're coming in and going out. You can mark where to plant your switchgrass or whatever kind of screening grass you're using, whatever you like. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can use for that. We might do some episodes on that stuff as well, food plot screening, the different types of seeds. I know we use some different stuff here. so But that's just another thing that you can mark, and that way you'll have that visual for when you go to plant that stuff. That's one thing I really like to do, especially when we go to client properties, is take some flags and mark off where they want stuff or where we decide stuff is going to be best. And then that way when we do come back in March, April, and we're on the tractor, it's real easy to just run along that boundary and you don't have to worry about going farther or not at, not far enough and either wasting seed or not getting enough to start with and then uh, stretching it thin. So those are some things, in my opinion, that are really going to help you get the ball rolling on your food plots for the 2023 planting seasons. Again, whether that be spring or fall, all those things can benefit for that. Uh, the one that is pretty specific is the frost seeding clover, obviously, but I wanted to make sure and get that one in because here, again, over the next four to eight weeks, it's going to be time to do that. So you got to be thinking about that. If you guys are looking for some clover, we do have a Ridge Hunter Outdoors blend. It's clover and chicory and some alfalfa. We really like it. Had really good success with it. Uh, that's what we used on Jeff's property. So if you guys want to see how that stuff actually turned out, you can go check out our YouTube page, uh, the Fry Property Vlog. You can see our clover plot there. That was our seed blend. 
Uh, we didn't put down as much chicory in it. We're going to frost seed some of that in this, this winter, and then we'll have it coming up next year. Um, we didn't put any down till the fall, I don't think, last year. But you can kind of see the blend that we use. Again, we've used it on client properties as well and always had really good success with it. It's just something that we liked that is a little bit different than the stuff you're going to find. It's white clovers. Uh, again, it's 10% chicory, and I believe 5% alfalfa, which is uh, a, a decent amount. And generally, uh, the blends, at least when we started making it, that we found didn't have quite as much chicory or alfalfa as we wanted. And they'd mix in some red clovers and stuff like that where we prefer the whites. So, And some guys do prefer the reds. That's fine. But that's just our blend. If you guys want to check it out, it is on the website. And if you want to order some of that, you can use our discount code uh, full draw. Uh, that's all caps, no space. And you can get 10% off that as well. So make sure you get your orders in for that stuff. And then... Anything else, again, on the website, you can use that discount code for and get 10% off. I want to mention that we have our Apple Podcast giveaway still. So, oh, and the website is ridgehunteroutdoors.com. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. But we have that Apple Podcast giveaway where you just leave us a review. Once we hit 25, we'll give away a trail camera package from Wild Game Innovations. It's the trail camera, the batteries, and the SD card, so you would be ready to go. $90 value. It takes like two minutes to go leave a review. Appreciate those of you who have already done that. And when we hit 25, again, we'll pull a name from one of those. And we'll announce it. We'll send you a message, and we'll get you your trail camera package. So also make sure you guys follow us on Spotify if that's where you're listening. And then I mentioned the Fry Property vlog on the YouTube channel. We do have a YouTube channel, Rich Hunter Outdoors. Subscribe to that. Like and comment. We're going to do some more stuff coming up this spring. On this food plot stuff, I might do some frost seeding videos. I'd like to do some more food plot videos this year more than we did last year so hopefully i'll have the time and capability to get that done but if you want to keep up with all that stuff you can subscribe to the youtube channel and now as i mentioned kind of in the preview we do have a new partner for both podcasts and again it's our first partner for the full draw friday and that is rodney hawkins at midwest farm and land and then he's got his own business that he recently started called rg outdoors so first off if you're looking for your own piece of ground to manage and hunt, he uh, Rodney's the guy to talk to. He grew up hunting and fishing in our area, and he's now putting that love for the outdoors into selling recreational properties uh, as a land specialist with Midwest Farm and Land. And Midwest Farm and Land, if you guys haven't heard of them, they're not really your average real estate company. Last year, they sold over $85 million worth of ground. With agents like Rodney all over Illinois, they're really a local company with a national reach. For more information on them or on what Rodney has to offer, you can contact him directly at 618-925-3153, 618-925-3153, and he'll get you taken care of. And that's if you're looking for a piece of ground that you want to call your own where you can do this food plot stuff, where you don't have to worry about other people hunting it. You don't have to worry about losing permission. They've got all kinds of stuff to fit whatever you're looking for, whether it be 20-acre piece or 120-acre piece or anything above or below that. Check him out. Give Rodney a call. He'll help you out. The other thing he's got going on, like I said, is RG Outdoors. I'm sorry, RG Outdoors. They currently carry hard and soft-sided blinds and blind chairs, all from Radix Blinds, in addition to an all-natural scent elimination product called Camo Dust. Uh, you guys can check more, get more information on the Camo Dust at camodust.com. I haven't personally used that, so I don't know much about it. But again, you can talk to Rodney. I'm sure he'll tell you all about it. Or you can go to that website. As for the blinds, Nate actually spent a lot of time in one of the soft-sided Radix blinds this season, uh, and he was more than happy with how it worked out. I know I sat in it one time with him as well. It's really good as far as even, you know, like kind of like a thermal layer. If you if we'd have put a heater in there and it was just brutal, brutally cold, then we would have been fine. The windows are pretty quiet for zipper windows. Um, he said the install was not bad at all. So if you're interested in anything like those Radix blinds or that camo dust uh, or any new products that they might have over at RG Outdoors, you can send them a message through their Facebook page or email them at rgoutdoors at yahoo.com. And again, you can call Rodney directly at 618-925-3153. So he's our new partner for the podcast. We're going to plan to have him on at some point to talk about what he's got going on, maybe talk about some real estate stuff and all that, maybe ways you guys can get into buying some ground. All that kind of stuff. So appreciate you guys tuning in this week. We'll have another one next week. Be sure to check that one out as well.